Good morning, this is Chris coming at you from a dreary Carolina beach this morning. See this morning I'm working with the molting with the pink jig head. All right. So we found one, bluefish action. All right, it's a nice little blue. We're gonna keep it going. I think we might have found them. Number two. So it's like this, uh, one of my viewers, I'm asked, how do I prepare the blues after I catch them? So you saw me catch them this morning, right? So here I am back at the house, and this is, you can see I bleed them. You see, that's why he's cut there, so I'm gonna be too graphic on that. But um, basically, I use my electric uh, fillet knife here, and we're gonna work this just like this. Turn that blade down. right at the base of the tail, flip it out like that. All right, so that's that. And basically, that's what you're looking at. And you can see there is a little bit of dark meat in there. You can see it's not much. I mean, that really doesn't bother me. So you can cut them in half like that. And um, if you really want to get that dark meat out of there, you know, you can do a little slit like that. And let's see if this works here for us. And I can just grab a hold of that little piece there. Let me see how that little just pulls right out. If you know, if you're not wanting the dark meat. Same thing there. And you can see it's not as much on that side. But that's how you get it out of there. And then there's your blues. And then there's one little final thing that I do. In that bowl, I place some of this. Your regular run-of-the-mill milk. And you're probably thinking, well, what does milk have to do with this? I think when I was in Florida, there was a fisherman that I might have been fishing alongside, and maybe I didn't care for blues at first. And you just put that, put those right in that milk, let those soak, you know, a good overnight or whatever, and um, then you're good to go. You know, it actually leaches some of the oil out, and that way, it's nice and fair. And then you just cook it up however you want to cook it up. Well, we 
just pulled a flounder out of there. I don't think he's going to make it either. Don't think he's going to make it, but we're going to measure. All right, so here we go. We're going to measure. Get the hook out of his mouth. All right, come on, 15. We'd we'll love to have flounder for lunch. Now, what do you know? 14 and a half. So he's not going home. All right. So another day, another time. Maybe we'll meet again. You know, one thing I think I'm learning about flounder fishing at the beach is that when you get really close in and you think I'm about to lift my line up and you're gonna stop winding and stop jigging, uh, that's probably a really bad idea because a lot of times lately, these flounder that I've been catching in the surf, they're almost barely in the water, so on the edge. So that last five yards when you're thinking I'm gonna wind up and cast way back out there again, I would say continue to work it really good all the way until you get it out of the water because sometimes they pop it right on the water's edge. So just a little tip when you're surf fishing for flounder, keep jigging. Until next time, be kind to the fish.